Hi there, Lloyd from LloydMasita.com. I happen to get a couple of more questions uh, being asked to me on my Facebook page. So, uh, today is the 7th of April, 2014 at 12.36 in the afternoon. The questions are as follows. First one is from Dhruv Sharma. I hope I got that right. Dhruv Sharma. He asked, why do people want to be famous? Well, the reason why people want to be famous is because if you actually believe in the, not believe, actually if you are aware of the law, the hierarchy of needs by Maslow, what he says is people love to be appreciated and, uh, you know, accepted. So here what happens is when more people say, oh, you're amazing, you're nice, or we like you. So what happens is it makes you feel good. It kind of gives your self-esteem and ego a little bit of boost. That is why everybody likes to, uh, you know, uh, put stuff on Facebook, in, me included. They love to put their uh, updates. They like to get likes. They like people appreciating them. So why people like to be famous? It gives them a temporary high and makes them, uh, you know, kind of gives them a validation for their uh, self-worth. So that is why people love to be famous. Okay, that was from Dhruv Sharma. Second one, Sohan Peter. Sohan Peter asks me, what are your hobbies? Well, what are my hobbies? My hobbies obviously are reading, as you can see the books at the back. Uh, second one is being on social media. That is why my Facebook, Twitter, all the other accounts are always full. Uh, being alive, even on Instagram. And um, yes, talking. That is why I have my own YouTube channel uh, where I keep talking, communicating, and sharing my expertise. Apart from that, it is training. Uh, one is in the gym and training others, not in the gym, but mentally and helping them improve their brand. And the other hobbies are playing uh, video games like PSP, I don't know, PSP, or PS4, and uh, even stuff on um, the iPad. Okay, so those are my hobbies. Yes, apart from pretty girls, that is, meeting pretty girls. But depends if they're intelligent, others, no, it's boring. Next one, Russell Mathias. Russell Mathias asked me, doesn't your hair grow on your head or do you trim it? Okay, see, now the thing is, uh, I'm 37, so I'm a little old. This patch of head here, this real estate, has, you know, grass that grows like a cricket ground. So it's very less. It's a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here. Little bit here. It's, it's kind of more or less bald, very thinning. But the hair here grows pretty thick. Okay, it's, it's, uh, so I look like a monk, a saint because it comes, hair is here, there's no hair here. So uh, what do I do? I shave it off once in every three days. So that's that's as far as my hair, which was asked by Russell Mathias. Do I trim it? No, I don't trim it. I shave it clean. The blades to use are Gillette Quattro or Mac uh, 3, okay? Next one, Fahad Muhammad. What is the reason you're not yet married? Well, the thing is, Muhammad is, he wants is, who do you want to marry a guy like me? You know? having all these tattoos, being so controversial, nobody wants to marry me. Okay, so the second thing is, uh, marriage is a responsibility, it should not be taken lightly, I'm twice divorced, and what I realized is, uh, marriage is not a joke, marriage is a responsibility, marriage is not romance, marriage is not beautiful, it is a responsibility, it is a sacrifice, so not everyone is meant to get married. So there are some people who are happily single, and well, maybe that's what I have. Okay, next one. Back as Bindas, Madame, he says, ha, 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 loss, L-O-L, Z-Z. Okay, fine, I don't know, what's the question? Anyway, Raj Mehta, he asks, what's all the reason did you choose to become an atheist? Why did I become an atheist? Well, because I researched and studied my religion. I read the Bible for four full years. I went to every religious group, congregation, gathering. I uh, watched documentaries, scientific evidences. I read books on psychology, neuroscience, cognitive psychology, and eventually I realized that religion was man-made. I realized that, you know, we used to pray to statues, crosses, and we used to believe in the devil. We used to believe in, uh, um, you know, christian -y stuff. So I just realized it's all hogwash and bullshit. If you pray, you get stuff. And if you don't get it, it's like God plans out when you should get it. So we used to light candles for Mother Mary. We used to put holy water on stuff and that's all bullshit. That's total nonsense. And uh, when did I actually become officially an atheist was when I watched the movie Zeitgeist, which has an amazing documentary, which clearly proves that the story of Jesus Christ uh, 3000 years ago was the story of Horus, who was the first God and everything that is from the two fish miracle that Jesus has to the 12 apostles, 12 tribes of Israel, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. there's only 12s over there. Um, was all copied from the zodiac, you know. So everything is kind of intermixed. 
So if you actually really research into religion, you'll find out all of it is bullshit. So that's why Christianity was bye-bye for me, Catholic stuff. And uh, I'm pretty happy being an atheist. Nothing. I was told by the Christian fanatics that once I become an atheist, my life would be destroyed. God punished me. The Holy Spirit, you know, there they lift the bread up and it becomes the flesh of Jesus and the wine becomes the blood of Jesus. This would, you know, eventually get to me. Nothing happened. The transubstantiation as it's called. Anyway, so Raj Mehta, what are all the reasons you chose to be an atheist? I hope you got your answer. Today, you want me to believe anything? Yes, I'll believe you. You tell me this, let's say this is a phone. You need to prove it to me that this is a phone, then I'll believe it. If you tell me this is a business card, well, obviously it doesn't look like a business card, but you need to prove it to me that it's a business card. So everything requires evidence. So you show me evidence, I'll believe it. Okay. Next one. Um, Sharia, Sharia court. Sharia court, court. Okay. Sharia Court asked me a few reasons why potentially successful people do not make it to the top. Well, see, um, Sharia, that's that's a great question. Why do people don't make it to the top? Because there are a lot of other factors apart from hard work and uh, just sheer resilience that matters. Luck is a very important ingredient. So it is sometimes you need to be the right person at the right time, at the right place. And if you have all those combinations with the right connections, you, you become the person at the top. And if you mean by the top means earning best, and being the best, I would just simply state it is a matter of George Bush versus uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Al Gore. George Bush versus Al Gore. Al Gore was clearly the president. He was clearly voted in. But however, George Bush, because of his connections in the Supreme Court and his father's poll, he managed to become the president. So it's as simple as that. You need to be the right person at the right place, right time, with the right connections, having the right luck. Okay. Next one, Adil Ali. If you had a chance to start your life all over again, would you like to keep it the way it is now or would you change anything? See, the fact of the matter is I would love to be a king, a sheikh, a president of a country or something really amazing. Be the richest man in the world with the most handsome face and the most amazing personality and perfect wife uh, with the perfect life. So if you ask me, yes, there are many changes I would like to make. I would like to be the richest, best, everything. But then again, we need to be realistic. So that is why I think um, how I am, is perfectly okay. At least I need to be realistic about it. So that was Adil Ali. Next one, Irfan VJ. What is the most happiest moment in your life? The most happiest moment of my life, uh, as of now, was winning the Middle East Championship of Public Speaking because I got the first place. You know, competing. I love competing. Uh, the other most happiest moment of my life, I think, is when I got the girl that I was crazy about. Apart from that, uh, well, then it became a disaster. Apart from that, the happiest moment of my life, uh, I can't think of any. But yes, winning the first place in the Middle East Championship of Public Speaking was the most happiest moment of my life because I did something which I didn't think was possible. Apart from that, uh, you know, life just goes on. So these are the questions by people who have asked me on my Facebook. The questions, thank you very much for asking me these questions. Got any more questions? Lloyd, LloydMasido.com. So this is Lloyd from LloydMasido.com and who is LloydMasido.com saying goodbye for now. Thank you very much. Goodbye.